A modern airliner is a thing of beauty, a blend of art, and technology. But an oxygen fire can quickly turn a thing of beauty into something almost unrecognizable. Oxygen system contamination was the main suspect in this fire. Improper servicing in this fire. And this airplane had an oxygen leak that should have been detected. But oxygen isn't flammable. How can you have an oxygen fire? Oxygen is one of the three necessary components of fire. The other two are fuel and heat. But with enough oxygen, things you don't normally consider flammable can burst into flame. And things you do consider flammable burn at a much higher, much more destructive rate. A number of inherent characteristics make airplane gaseous oxygen systems possibly susceptible to oxygen fires if not properly maintained extremely high pressure, typically 1,850 pounds per square inch. Infrequent use. Oxygen systems are only used during an emergency. It can be difficult to spot problems in components that look brand new. And two effects related to extremely high pressure, high speed particle impact, and adiabatic compression. Let's take a closer look. At high pressures, there's no such thing as a small leak. If a leak develops, the atmosphere in a closed compartment can become supersaturated with oxygen in a very short time. Systems that get used all the time get more attention and are more familiar. It's only natural. But less used servicing and maintenance procedures are easy to forget. That's only natural too. As we have already said, things that burn slowly in a normal atmosphere burn much more quickly and generate much more heat when oxygen is added. If the combustion is rapid enough, it becomes what is commonly known as an explosion. This same principle is at work when particle impact occurs. Imagine a particle of contamination loose in the system during servicing the high pressure of the incoming gas would cause it to move at high speed. Eventually, it would impact with some part of the system. The resulting energy could release enough heat to cause rapid combustion in an oxygen-rich environment. Adiabatic compression occurs when a valve is opened too quickly. Oxygen molecules enter the system at a high rate of speed. When the oxygen gets to the end of the line and has no place to go, it begins to compress. Enormous amounts of heat can be released up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. With all that heat and an oxygen-rich environment, almost anything, certainly any contaminants in the system, can serve as fuel. Isn't it ironic that something so critical in an emergency can also be a source of danger? What can you do? Constantly watch for problems. Before one of the disasters we have seen, oxygen was being replaced at 18 times the normal rate. If someone had checked on why, the leak would have been detected in time to prevent the fire that occurred. Follow approved procedures and use only approved materials. For example, Snoop is the only approved product for leak checking. Cleanliness is critical. 
hands, tools, ground service equipment, and anything else that comes in contact with oxygen system components must be totally free of grease or any other contamination. Limit exposure time. Oxygen system components and related ground service equipment should not be open to the air for extended periods. Follow the limits in the maintenance manual. And maintenance should be performed in a clean room environment. If proper resources or facilities are not available, some components should be returned to the component manufacturer for repair. Finally, be sure to follow procedures in the maintenance manual and interval recommendations and requirements in the maintenance planning document or MPD. Also, see the related article in the January 1995 issue of Boeing's Airliner magazine. These are all simple common sense rules but they are very important. Let's review them one more time. Watch for and be suspicious of anything unusual. If something doesn't seem quite right, check it out. Follow approved procedures and use only approved materials. Keep it clean. Hands, tools, and ground service equipment must be absolutely free of grease and other contaminants. Limit exposure time. Bag any components and cap any open lines. Follow published time limits. A clean room environment may be necessary. If proper facilities or materials are not available, some components should be returned to the component manufacturer for repair and know and follow maintenance manual and maintenance planning document procedures, requirements, and interval recommendations. In an ideal world, oxygen systems would never be needed, but if the time ever comes, they must be safe. All around the world, thousands of times a day, it's important.